People seem to really like the previous calculator trick video, especially my year 11s that are about to take their exams, so I've found more tricks for them. Alright, we're moving on to one of my favourite ones. The next trick is perfect for plotting graphs. We can quickly get the coordinates for a line equation by putting the equation directly into the calculator. For example, on the grid, draw the graph of y equals to 8 minus 2x for values of x from minus 1 to 4. On your calculator, press the mode or menu button and press the number that represents the table mode or navigate to it using the arrow keys on the calculator. Now, all we do is type the equation after the equal symbol, so 8 minus 2x. Now, to get the x variable, we press alpha and the right bracket button. Next, we press equals on our calculator. If you see the g function, press equals again. For where it says start, type the lowest x value on the graph. For this question, we're told that that is minus 1, so we type minus 1 in. After, we press equals and type the last x value on the graph, which is 4. Step tells us the increments on the x-axis, so for this question we're going to use 1, as we want it to go up by 1. After, we press equals. What you see now is a list of the x and y coordinates that you're going to plot. You can find the y values in the f, open bracket, x, close bracket, column. The first coordinate is minus 1, 10, followed by 0, 8, and so on. When you press down on the calculator, you're able to see more of the values. After plotting all these coordinates, we can now join them together with a straight line to complete the question. This exact same process works with quadratic, cubic, reciprocal, or any other graph questions such as these. And to show you that this is true, here are some examples from exam questions. This question says, Complete the table of values for y equals to x squared minus 4 and plot the graph. We first start typing the equation by getting the x variable by pressing alpha followed by the right bracket button. To add the power of 2, we press the squared button. Now we type the rest of the equation. We now set the range and step values according to where the question's x values start and end. The values start from negative 3 and end at 3, where these values go up by a step of 1. We press equals again to get the coordinates, and now plot the coordinates. Since this graph is quadratic, we connect the points with a smooth curved line, like so. That's all we have to do for this question. Now this question is quite similar to the previous question. We type the equation, but using the cubed button instead of the squared button to get to the power of 3. We set the range and step like before. We get the coordinates, and finally we plot the coordinates. Then we connect the points with a smooth curved line. And that's it. This is what the final answer will look like. With this question, a slightly different graph, but the process is still the same. We start by timing the equation by first using the fraction button. Then we set the range, and then we set the step to be 0.5 this time, as it's going up by 0.5 in the first value of x. We get the coordinates, and then we plot the coordinates. And just like before, we connect the points with a smooth line. And that's all it takes to get the coordinates for any line equation using our calculator. Okay, moving on. Next is the fraction button. Now, some people might think, okay, the fraction button is quite self-explanatory, but here's a cool trick that we can do with our fraction button. This button can be used to answer a few types of questions, such as finding the highest common factor, the lowest common multiple, and factorizing linear expressions quite easily. For example, if we wanted to find the highest common factor of 36 and 60, let's represent this number as a fraction. Let's place both these values in the fraction using the fraction button on our calculators. We press equals and the fraction completely simplifies to 3 over 5. Now, to find the highest common factor from this, we ask ourselves, what number would you divide by 36 and 60 to get to 3 and 5? To get this value, we divide the numerators and denominators by each other. 36 divided by 3, or 60 divided by 5, they both give us the answer of 12. 12 will therefore be the highest common factor. So to find the lowest common multiple is a very quick calculation from this point. We multiply the numerator by the opposite denominator. So in this case, we can use 36 times by 5, which gives us 180. 180 is the lowest common multiple. How about factorizing linear expressions such as 24x minus 18? Very similar to how we calculate the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. We first represent the values as a fraction and type both values into the fraction on our calculators. 
after we press equals and then it has fully simplified again. The values in the numerator and denominator are the values that will go into the bracket like so. The value outside the bracket we can find just like we did previously. We divide the numerators or we divide the denominators and that value ends up being 6. Therefore our final answer of our factorized expression is 6 bracket 4x minus 3 close bracket. Here are a couple exam style questions that we can use this button for. Tom and Amy set the alarm on their phones to sound at 6 a.m. Both alarms sound together at 6 a.m. Tom's alarm then sounds every eight minutes. Amy's alarm then sounds every 14 minutes. At what time will both alarms next sound together? Now, it may not be entirely clear just by looking at the question, but this is actually a lowest common multiple question. We're trying to go up in as many eights and 14s until we reach a number that they both land on that is the same. And whatever that number is, is the next time or the first or lowest common multiple of 8 and 14. So let's put both these numbers into a fraction by using our fraction button on our calculator. We press equals and we get the simplified fraction of 4 over 7. To find the lowest common multiple, we multiply our 8 and 7 to give us 56, which means that they both will land on the same time at 56 minutes. So we add 56 minutes to our 6 a.m., therefore giving us the time of 6.56. Both the alarms will ring again at 6.56 a.m. Let's have a look at this question. Expand, simplify, then fully factorize this expression. 8, open bracket, x minus 5, close bracket, plus 5, open bracket, 4x plus 1, close bracket. We start by multiplying x and negative 5 by 8 to give us 8x minus 40. We multiply 4x and 1 by 5 to give us 20x plus 5. We simplify by adding 8x to 20x and negative 40 to positive 5. This gives us 28x minus 35. Now to factorize, let's put 28 and 35 into a fraction on our calculator and press equals. The fraction we get is simplified, giving us the values that go into our bracket, 4 and 5. The number that goes outside the bracket is when we divide the numerators or the denominators by each other. This value ends up being 7. So our final answer is 7 open bracket 4x minus 5 close bracket. The next useful feature on this calculator is the statistics option. This mode runs calculations on data you input and produces a variety of useful information about the inputted data. To help show this, let's look at this typical exam type question. The table shows information about the heights of 80 children. Calculate an estimate for the mean height. Find the class interval that contains the median. Before we use the calculator, we first have to find the mid values of the inequalities. After doing this, we need to get the calculator into statistics mode. We press menu, then navigate to the statistics mode by using the arrows or by pressing the associated number. For me, the associated number is two. Because we're looking for the estimated mean and median, we press one for the one variable option. Next, we proceed to fill in the table with the mid x values going into the x column and the frequency going into FREQ or the frequency column. To fill in the values, we type the values and after each value, we press the equals to lock it in. Once all is completed, we press the option button here. To see the calculations associated with the data you input, press three for one variable calculations. Now you'll be able to see a variety of calculations the calculator has made. The first calculation X bar tells you the estimated mean of your data. No need to calculate yourself anymore. The calculator does this for you. And for the median, if you press down, the median can be found where it says MED for median. For this question, the median can be found where the inequality is 165. Therefore, the class interval where the median can be found is 160 less than X less than or equal to 170. These are the final answers. Now, these tricks are great, but not the only ones I know. Watch my first video to see more ways to use your calculator. I'm Mr. Ken, like, comment and subscribe for more. Keep pushing onwards and upwards. Peace.